Okay. I'm just trying to do a check to make sure everybody's in pocket. Do we remember to go live? Five, right. four, three, two, one, Ashe. Okay, it's up on Facebook, huh? Yes. Okay. Greetings, everyone. This is Baba Singor. How are you all doing out there in Facebook land? You know, this, 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 this is. Okay, again, it's Baba Singor. How's everybody doing? We good. Good. Well, we're going to get formally started in about a minute. I just want to make sure that everybody is ready and opens up your cameras. If everybody could open up their cameras and, and stay muted for a minute, I just want to make sure that every, we got everybody that is in the lineup. And some folks are going to be coming in later, so that's not no problem because they're in the later part. Hey, Tony, hey, what's up, Anthony Browder, my brother? All right, so we're going to get started uh, because we already are streaming. And uh, this is going to be a very serious tribute to our brother, Renoko Rashidi who is 67 today, Earth Day wise, and we would be remiss if we didn't honor his Earth Day. Uh, we know our brother's in transition and we know he's in great hands. And I wanna thank uh, uh, Anthony Browder, uh, Obi Holly, Adasi, Mama Tendai, Mama Paula, and uh, all of the UNIA people that'll be here that are not here. I wanna thank the Secretary General for being here. I know Dr. Chenzara is finishing up a class. She'll be with us. We're hoping to have Shakara, Ambassador Shakara from the UK come in with us. And also Chief Foday from Sierra Leone. Uh, and the reason I bring in the X generation folks into this is because it is a critical that the X generation and the millenniums get locked into Renoko Rashidi, those that were already to advance his legacy, as well as carry on their callings. So without any further ado, I'm gonna call on Mama Tendai to bless us with libation. And the way the program is gonna run for all of you listening in Facebook land, uh, who called me or sent me text trying to get into Zoom. We did deliberately did not let everybody in the Zoom because we have presenters tonight in the division that Dr. Renoko Rashidi served in which is the Harambe Division 369 of the UNIA ACL Division 369. We are very, very pleased to see all the great tributes that have taken place thus far and those tributes that have been organized. And we're gonna talk about some of those in the program, but tonight is primarily so that these folks that are in the Zoom who had personal relationships and contact with our good brother Renoko here physically, and we'll continue to have contact with him in the spirit world, have an opportunity to express themselves. And of course, we're gonna share this on YouTube and share it with other brothers and sisters. So if you're not blessed to be with us now live on Facebook, don't worry, we will get it out to the world because one of the most important things is love of African people. And I love our African people, as my good brother Renoko Rashidi used to always say, he loves Black African people and he loved Black African women. So without any further ado, Mama Tendai, uh, if you would bless us with uh, prayer libations and uh, we'll get started into the program. Uh, right after Mama Tendai does libations, I'm going to just announce, make a few announcements, and then we're going to go right to my good brother Anthony Browder who is gonna give us reflections and updates. And then we're going to show some of our good brother on his Earth Day, and then we're gonna to go to Adasi. So without any further ado, Mama Tendai of the African Diaspora Ancestral Commemoration Institute and so many other things. Mama Tendai is just a great, she ain't retired, even though she's no longer teaching, she's always teaching. So Mama Tendai, bless us please. Greetings, but uh oh, I have you on, on on two and it's echoing, so I need to come out of one. Yeah, I, I had the same issue. <laughs> you know, with this technology, we're working on it, brothers and sisters. But for real, uh, it's a blessing that we have this ability to communicate with each other. Uh, and and and, how you doing, Mama Yuri? 
Welcome, welcome, Baba. Good, Kill. good. Thank you. All right, we're thanks, just getting ready to do So everybody sit tight and, and mute yourselves, but please keep your pictures up. Okay. Brothers and sisters, I'm honored to come to you at this time. Normally, I would pour libation in Yoruba, but I want to make sure that we're all able to participate and you understand. So I may use a few Yoruba words, but I will explain those words in English and ask you all to join into the libation because this is a true community experience. I normally we would pour with spirit or gin of some, some liquor of some sort, because we say that you use spirit to call spirit. But in my meditations today, it came that I should actually use water as the primal essence of life to do this libation because what we are doing is trying to bring forth the spirit, the continued energy, the continued life of our brother, Renoko Rashidi. Mm -hmm. So I start off by paying homage and honor Mother Earth and Father Sky, that we are able to complete the union, not only the union of opposites, but also the creative energy of male and female that must come forth in our efforts. I pay homage and I say, I cool down. Tutu Eshu, Tutu Ogun, Tutu Obatala, Tutu Yemenja, Tutu Oya, Tutu Shango, Tutu Yemenja. Kututu Oya, Tutu Orumala, Tutu Orisha, Tutu Oshun, Tutu Orisha. I'm asking that continue to do this. That you all make noise because what we're trying to do is to call our ancestors, to have them to come to be with us. So I say, Mojiba Olumun, Mojiba Lofi, Mojiba Olumare. Mother, Father, God, the creator of the universe maker of heaven and earth, giver of life, we call upon you. We call upon our ancestors as we say, King Mashe, which means long may they live. May they live forever and ever. Not just in our words, but in our hearts and in everything it is that we do. So we begin by saying, King Mashe, Marcus Messiah Garvey, Ashe, you all can say Ashe. Okay. Okay. And help me call Ashe. on the ancestors. We want to call on our major ancestors like Marcus Garvey, Ashe. Francis Ashe. Press Welsing, Ashe. Ashe. Mama Ashe. Pat Newton, John Ashe. Henry Clark, Ashe. John Henry Clark, Robert Kamal Robinson, Ashe. 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 AJ Rogers, Ashe, Cancer Williams, Ashe. 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 We call upon all the scholars. Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Francis Cress Wellesley. Ancestors like Bobby Oriegu. Okay. We call upon all of our ancestors. Now you may call upon your personal ancestors to come and be with us today. Call yeah, upon your household ancestors. All in right. You know, Ari Snuggins. Ari Wright. Grandfather Manny Kocho. Vernon Huggins, Mervyn Morris, Joyce McCauley, Marlene Dufa, Alex Palmer, and as we have called upon the primal essence, the Orisha of the universe, those who maintain balance and in harmony for the for Olivia Mare, Mother, Father, God. We call upon their names as they represent nature, the Neturu. They hold together the universe with the wind, the water, the air that we breathe. For everything that we need in terms of sustenance, we call them, but we call them by their Orisha names. But we understand that we have called all of them, asking them to calm down, to give us peace, to give us understanding, to give us direction, to help us to understand our way and how we must pick up the mantle to follow our brother, Junoko Rashidi, and all that he has done and the work that he has committed to us and left to us, That's not right. just in our hands for us to use, but also to teach us and for us to use to teach others. That's As right. we thank you for your blessings, past, present, 
and future. We thank you for your love and for your light. We thank you for your energy. We thank you for the beautiful energy of Baba Renoko Rashid. May he live long among us. May he live long among all our ancestors. May he live long and be lifted up with our ancestors and to be with us as we go forth in this tribute to him to honor him and honor that which he has done yeah. and that he continues to do a, because yeah, we know yeah. that he lives right. in our yeah. words, in our thoughts, in our deeds, yeah. in our energy, yeah. in everything it is that we do. Okay. And we yeah. say Asha. at this point, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I ask our ancestors to please guide us in I this sure program will. today, help us to be able to mm -hmm. pull the energy that we need kind of, kind of, for us to have a wonderful experience <laughs> with each other, sharing love, sharing understanding, yeah. and sharing light, and sharing all the work that we must yet do. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Mama Tendai, can I ask everybody, Mama Kala and Mary, can y'all mute? Please mute. Uh, that way it is better for us to hear the various different presenters. If everybody okay. stays muted until time for you to unmute. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, so brothers and sisters, tonight is a special day. Our brother, 67 years with us. In 1954, the creator blessed us with a life, Renoko Rashidi. So tonight we're gonna to celebrate, this is not a party, this is a commemoration and tribute to the great legacy and his cosmic works. So I couldn't think of anybody other than our dear brother, Anthony Browder, who <laughs> I, I'm not gonna just lay it all out. I know most of us here are family, but I'm gonna leave it to my brother Anthony, but he has created so many different institutions that have ushered in a, a, a line of brothers and sisters that are carrying on a great legacy. And he's also one of the committee people who are working with the committee to make sure that the legacy of our brother Renoko Rashidi remains properly intact and that we respect and send love and best wishes to his family in these days of mourning, especially to Asata Garvey. So without any further ado, my good brother, First, bro, I want to just thank you for all that you've done and do, because you are a perfect example. Uh, and Brother Renoko called you by name, Karak. So would you you go ahead on and, and bless us with some words of reflection and take your time, brother, and lay it out. Let us know what we need to know, as well as how people can be supportive. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, Brother Sango for organizing this event, uh, one of many tributes to honor our brother. And uh, it's the least that we can do to honor his spirit, his legacy, and to keep his, his, his name going for those who didn't know him and will be learning about him as a result of all of these tributes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it was two weeks ago uh, today that uh, we first learned of Renoko's passing. And like many of you, I, I was shocked. I had received a phone call from a colleague of mine in Egypt who had um, was staying in the same hotel. They were organizing uh, Jabari uh, and Anika um, Osazi were uh, organizing a, a study tour to Egypt and they were staying in the same hotel that Renoko, uh, Renoko's group was staying in. And so they expected to connect with him today uh, on that day, on the second, only to find out that he had passed. So all of us were in shock and it's been very difficult to, to get a lot of information from overseas, but I've been in contact with um, the, uh, a good colleague of mine in Cairo who's been in contact with the um, funeral home in Cairo. Uh, we also have a, a dear friend, uh, Jamal Sands, whose mother, Cynthia Sands, lives in Northwest Washington, who many of you all are probably familiar with. Where her son, uh, Jamal, uh, is stationed at the US Embassy in Cairo. So we were fortunate to connect with him a couple of years ago and um, we were really, uh, and the family was really dependent upon the US Embassy helping to process all of the paperwork so that they can get uh, Renoko's body uh, back to the United States. And I'm pleased to say that everything went uh, relatively smoothly. 
and Renoko's body was returned to LA uh, this past Friday on the 13th. Uh, and that Friday the 13th, August the 13th, just happened to be the 14 year anniversary of the passing of Baba Asa Hilliard, who also passed uh, in Egypt. So um, <clears throat> Renoko's body has been picked up by uh, the funeral home. It's been identified uh, by the family and we have a meeting tomorrow. The uh, planning committee have, has a meeting tomorrow evening uh, in which we're going to finalize all of the uh, plans for his services. What, what I can tell you now is that his services will be held in, in Los Angeles at the end of the month. And uh, as of right now, there will be a screening um, of the viewing, a viewing of the body uh, on one day and then the following day we will have his homegoing services. So I'll be able to share more precise details with you uh, after tomorrow. I'll, I'll make sure I'll pass all the information on to Brother Singor so he can email it to everyone who is watching and, and following all of the uh, works of the UNIA. So um, <clears throat> one of our other uh, concerns is um, making sure that Renoko's legacy remains intact. Uh, there will be numerous efforts on the part of some unscrupulous people to uh, replicate his works, his publications, his, um, his photographs. And uh, we have an obligation and a responsibility to make sure that everything Renoko worked so hard to develop, to write, to produce, and to maintain uh, is in an archive where future scholars will have an opportunity to study his works. So we're um, going to be having conversations with um, a couple of attorneys after the funeral has been resolved so that we can map out the next steps to help uh, preserve his, his archive and his legacy. And there's also a Renoko Rashidi uh, legacy fund that has been established. His sister, Carol, is the administrator of that uh, legacy fund. And I'll post that information in the chat so you all can uh, contribute if you like. Uh, and again, the purposes of this fund is to raise the funds to help preserve Renoko's uh, catalog of books, his, his papers, and his um, photography. So it's a massive undertaking that will probably take uh, months to, to, um, to record properly. Uh, but what, what's been interesting is that I've been, as you can imagine, been receiving a number of, of phone calls and emails from people all around the country who heard the news of Renoko's passing and want to help out. I received um, a call over the weekend from a sister who is a retired uh, employee of the Library of Congress. She worked in the African division and had done some research for Renoko. She called to express her uh, condolences for his passing and to volunteer her services. So I had a brief conversation with her today and, and, and share with her that after we have kind of consolidated the path forward for uh, consolidating his, um, his materials, his, his prints and his publications, then I will surely be in contact with her so that um, we can rely on her assistance to make sure that his information is properly cataloged and accessible to those scholars who will, uh, for, for, for years and generations uh, following the footsteps and honor the legacy of Renoko. Uh, we will be having a, a tribute to Renoko on next Sunday, the 22nd. That day, <clears throat> Renoko and I selected that day, August the 22nd, when we had our first brother to brother uh, session on Father's Day, June the 20th. And uh, we, we set that date because we knew we were going to be doing a lot of traveling. Renoko was going to go to Ghana and, and, um, and Egypt. I was going to go to Egypt. My daughter was going to go to Ghana with Renoko. I was going to hook up with them in Ghana. And then we were going to make, um, make way for Renoko to come and visit our site in Egypt. You know, Renoko has been, you know, um, lauding the work of the Asia Restoration Project for, for several years. He's been one of my uh, most ardent supporters, but he's never been to the site. So we, <laughs> we have made special preparations uh, to receive him and his group at our site um, on last Monday, the 9th. And with Renoko's passing, uh, we still were able to receive his group. 
and they had a wonderful time visiting our site. We had a special banner erected for Renoco. We had an altar set up so that they could do a libation. And um, people who were there certainly felt Renoco's presence at our site. And then they visited, uh, visited our, uh, our tomb, uh, our tombs at the site. So uh, although Renoco did not physically have an opportunity to see the work that we've been doing um, in South Ossesif, I'm sure his spirit was there. And we're gonna be doing some other things over the course of the next few months to honor uh, Renoco and to preserve his legacy in a manner that I'm sure will be pleasing to him, his descendants and everyone who knew and loved him. So on this coming Sunday at 6.30 on the 22nd of, of August, uh, we're gonna do a special tribute of remembrances to Renoko Rashidi. Uh, we've got his sister and uh, brother-in-law will be, will be on board as well as his, his cousin, uh, Dr. Joyce King, who is a brilliant scholar and who I've known, for, uh, I've known for 11 years now. And it was only recently that I discovered that um, she was Renoko's cousin because she only recently discovered that she and Renoko are cousins. So um, we'll have Dr. King on, on our program as well. And we'll sh share a couple of other uh, surprises. Uh, some, some new information has, has come forward about some things uh, concerning Renoko that we're gonna share. So I'll post that information, that link to the August 22nd event in the chat room as well. And um, when Renoko and I discussed having this August event, our plan was to make this a, a paid event and we would split the proceeds 50-50. Well, since Renoko um, is no longer with us to receive his share, what we're going to do is to give uh, his share to his daughter, Asada, and I'm going to kick in an additional uh, 30% from, from my portion of the proceeds uh, to go to her. Uh, there has been some talk about the possibility that his 14-year-old daughter, uh, Asada Ross, uh, may in fact come to LA for, for the services. So hopefully we'll, we'll know something about that within the next week or so. Uh, they have to secure the visa and all the necessary permits to, uh, to travel. So hopefully that will happen and we'll have an opportunity to meet her. And the last thing that I want to uh, uh, talk about briefly is Renoko's role as a father and, and our role as fathers, fathers of, of daughters, and how uh, my daughter Atlantis has been instrumental in, um, in being a part of, of, of the work that I've done since she was four years old. Uh, she's been traveling to uh, all of the lectures that we sponsored in DC since 1987, bringing scholars in. She's traveled to Africa at, at least probably around 20 times. Uh, she's been participating in the archeological excavations with me in Egypt for over a decade now. And she's poised to take over the business as I slow down and eventually step back. And Renoko was a very concerned about his daughter uh, following in his footsteps. So I, I feel a personal sense of obligation to help uh, this young sister understand uh, the strength and power of her father and how much he meant to the world. And it's, it's very difficult for, for a child of someone who is in the public's eye to walk in their parents' footsteps. It's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do and very intimidating for the children. So I can just imagine how uh, Sister Asada is feeling, how intimidated uh, she may feel about uh, just coming to grips with her father's legacy. And um, I would love to, to see this community in DC and, and in the United States wrap their arms around this young lady and help nurture her development such that when she is ready, uh, she can step up and continue the, uh, the great and mighty walk of her father, Renoko Rashidi. So I would love to see uh, that happened in the very near future. And I'm sure that um, probably everyone on this uh, Zoom meeting this evening feels the same way. So I trust that with Noko's guidance from the ancestral realm, he will position things on the cosmic chessboard to make sure that his daughter is taken care of and her aunts and uncles here in the States will help uh, nurture her development so that uh, we'll have another uh, Rashidi 
uh, continuing the work. And, and, and hopefully, you know, it's every parent's desire that their children can exceed their work. So it would be truly a wonderful thing if uh, little Asada um, standing on the shoulders of her father was able to take his, his legacy into the next dimension and serve as a beacon for young sisters and brothers who need to fall in love with their African selves. So with that, um, our Brother Singo, I thank you for this opportunity to share with the family. I thank you all for listening and I will be providing more details as they uh, come available. And I thank you so very much for honoring our brother, Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Uh, Anthony Brown, my brother, thank you so much uh, for a very, very uh, clear, the clear clarity that you shared with us of what's going forward. And thank you so much for stepping up as you always do. You know, uh, my brother Renoko called you Karak. You look like Karak, but you, you know, more importantly, you're Anthony Browder and you're creating a, a strong legacy. And we certainly appreciate the fact that Atlantis is following right alongside you. In fact, I believe Atlantis was the first one that went down into uh, uh, Moon's tomb, Cracker Moon's yeah, buried. Yeah, and see, that's a blessing. That's something that a father, well, that's just a great example that you set. And, and, and I'm glad she stepped to the task. And she definitely has, has inspired a whole lot of young people. Uh, and, uh, you know, Baba Kamau used to tell me, Tony better look out because Atlantis is going to be the bomb. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Baba Kamal used to always say to me. But, you know, anyway, I just wanted to share that. And while we get ready for the next phase, we're right on time, by the way, brothers and sisters. And uh, I'm learning from my brother, Tony. He, he doesn't start programs late. He starts programs on time. And that's important because, you know, the time that we have to get back to is our ancient African time because we already are out of sync in, in Yorugu time. So we want to get back to Africa time, and it's the best way to do that is to demonstrate it, even though we utilize Yorugu time, is to be present and accounted for it early. And I'm just pleased to say that Ambassador Chief Fode from Sierra Leone is with us, and we're going to hear from him later. Uh, he's my brother, and my good brother Shakara, Ambassador of the UK, and uh, is with us. And later on, Dr. Chenzara, from, who is the uh, High Commissioner General, will be with us representing not only San Croix, but the Caribbean and Central America. So without any further ado, it's on you, Zama and Heru. We're gonna have a screen sharing taking place right now. So as soon as that takes place, and I'm sort of double tasking, I'm watching us on Facebook and we, we looking good, thank you. Oh boy, what a picture. But anyway, look at my brother Renoko. One of many programs that we, we have done with Renoko. And oh, look at this picture here. Oh, this is when we were in Mexico.
Isaiah Mortar statue. Yuri is with us tonight, Adasi. Renoko. Yeah, famous move of Renoko.
Akili and Kuma in Philadelphia with Renoko. Wow. Great, 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 Zama. Excellent, excellent. Y'all, that was that was excellent. Thank you for sharing those 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 uh, memories and pictures. And uh, I want to reiterate something that uh, uh, Tony said, and that is important for us to aid and assist the committee that has gotten together in supporting everything that they wish the African community to do. And, and the more of us that support that, the more the work will be strong and supportive. Now we're gonna move into uh, listening to my dear sister Tendai, I believe, and anybody else from Adasi that wishes to share. The African Diaspora Ancestral Commemoration Institute, you all, is no strangers to any of us in this Zoom. And for those that are on Facebook, you should know if you don't know, because they have been helping us keep our focus on the importance of not just standing on the shoulders of our ancestors, but bringing our ancestors back into life and to follow their legacy. So without any further ado, we're going to go to her. I want to remind to Tony, Tony, anything that you want us to, to stay on tune and put it in the chat, uh, particularly how people can contribute and how people can also sign up for the program on Sunday coming up on the 22nd. I think that's extremely important uh, for those of us to support that, spread the word. Uh, you heard the purpose of it, uh, and it's a continuation of the father to father. And if y'all haven't seen that, you got to check it out because that was that was that was powerful, and uh, that's a great example for all of us babas. We need to close ranks and work hard to take care of the work and catch up with our goddesses because our goddess sisters don't be playing around. Sister Tendai of Adas. Mama Tendai. She's trying to connect. Oh, she got disconnected. While we're waiting on Mama Tendai, let me just make a quick announcement. Uh, we we have a, a scheduled program, but we are going to allow everybody that's in the Zoom an opportunity to reflect toward the latter part. So stick with us uh, and please. Uh, if y'all have got Facebook and got other 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 devices, share. Because I'm on my Facebook page, I'm on several of my Facebook pages, and thanks to Baba Mosi, Baba Mosi, who uh, is a, is the Minister of Information, and is here with us. He will be expressing some things too. But we want to thank him for allowing us to use this Zoom that belongs to D Division 330. Let me let me get some clarity. Renoko was a member of 330 at one time. He was a member of 332. And he was a member of 369. And we're going to talk, myself and the Secretary General are going to talk a little bit about Harambe Division 369, which Renoko was in. And Renoko was particular about paying his dues. He always pays his dues on time. He always wanted to know what was going on. He spoke at many conventions. He's done a tremendous amount of work. But most important, y'all don't forget this, he not was our traveling ambassador. He is our traveling ambassador. And we hope that we can direct brothers and sisters to connect, particularly with our African brothers and sisters in India. I think that's very important, brothers and sisters, because Renoko, uh, when I met Renoko in 1991, and we're waiting on Mama Tendai to get connected, and I see she's trying to connect. But when I met Renoko at the Elegant Manor at a UNIA convention with Tony Martin, Brother Maddox, just a whole slew of giants, that's the first time I ever heard Brother Renoko and uh, Tony and, and others, I was blown away because I know my brother Wayne Chandler. I knew the works of Ivan Van Sertema. I knew quite a bit about India, but I had no idea until I heard brother Renoko break some things down of the amount of Africans that are in India and how they don't, some of them don't even know we're out here and many of us don't, don't know they're there. So that's a perfect example. So in, in keeping with what Tony said, carrying out the legacy. We got a lot of work to do to continue the legacy of Dr. Clark, Doc Ben, Asa Hilliard, Chancellor Williams, Charles L. James. We got tons of ancestors. Marcus Garvey say, look for him to be in the whirlwind and we know his earth day is tomorrow. And while we waiting on Tendai, is anybody else from Ad uh, Adasi? Mama, Mama uh, uh, Yuri, you wanna share any words while we waiting on Mama Tendai to connect? Mama Paula? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Mama Singo, I'm, I'm driving. Mama Paula, you want to go ahead? 
Sorry. Okay. Well, I see quite a few people. I see Carla. Carla, you know, any one of Adasi, while we're waiting on Mama Tendai this year. Of course, we can move on and then come back to Adasi too. So that's not a problem. But uh, I wanted to try to stick with Adasi because, uh, well, anyway, I see Benton. Yeah. <clears throat> all of a lot of Adasis in here. <laughs> the, the one thing that I, I, I want to say, I mean, we have heard a lot about our brother, Renoko. Uh, he is amazing. Um, what I what strikes me the most about brother Renoko Rashidi was his gentle spirit and um, his deep, profound respect for Black women. And I think that if, if brothers and sisters can learn anything from Baba Ranuka Rashidi, in addition to all his scholarly work, is how much respect he had and love he had for Black women and his gentle soul, his gentle spirit, but he carried like, as they say, a heavy sword. And that to me is what always touched my soul. Um, we are deeply gonna miss him. And I know Mama Tenda is that a lot to say, so I'm gonna let, uh, if any of uh, the Dasi sister wants to say anything, but um, that, that, that is the thing that struck me the most about Baba Renoko, a powerful, powerful, but gentle spirit. Thank you, Mama Yuri. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna keep moving. We can always come back uh, to that because we got a lot of people that, that are here from abroad and we wanna move on to uh, the Secretary General, uh, if she's ready. Uh, 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 Mama Carla and Mama Mary, can you can you un, can you unmute? We're gonna we're gonna come right to you, and then we're gonna come back to Mama Tendai when she gets connected. To come back to Adasi, because we got a long evening, and we want to keep it going, and we want to make sure everybody has a proper time to share. So, without any further ado, uh, this is the Secretary General of the UNIA, and has been for a long time. And not only that, she she was the uh, is the acting president. I mean, I'm sorry, acting assistant president of uh, 369. I'm the acting president. So without any further ado, Mary, you want to share some yeah. reflections on Renoko? Yes. Um, well, he's born under that Leo sign, and I love Leo men. Been married to two of them. Um, so he's a, a man after my own heart. He's one a man that traveled. He got the most out of his day. He didn't let people waste his time because he knew that time could not be replaced. So he was on the move. He traveled to over a hundred countries. I mean, just the thought of that, that doing that on a regular basis and not only traveling, but writing and also sponsoring and being in, uh, in programs that are being given to him, for him and on his behalf. But I really remember him in Chicago convention in 2015 when he was our keynote speaker. And I think everybody was thoroughly impressed with his presentation. Uh, Dr. Renoko was a, not only a writer, but a student as the young lady said before me, he had a gentle spirit. And she said that he really respected black women. So to me, that's, hey, that's important. Uh, if you respect black women, you know, as, as um, the nation of Islam would teach any man that loves a woman, respects the universe. You, you will be treated just like you, the universe would treat you that way, the way you treat women. So this we system. know that we've got a long ways to go as a race of people. Renoko has done his part. And when I remember Ichigumbe uh, in DC, Division 330 came up with this great big poster of all the heroes and who are now ancestors. And now we need to add Brother Renoko's picture to that great big poster. Amy Jakes Garvey, Marcus uh, Garvey Jr., Marcus Garvey himself, Amy Jakes Garvey, John Henry Clark, so many others, they have done their work. It is up to us to not only identify their strengths, but continue their work and protect their legacy. So I'm happy that Senghor asked uh, Brother Tony Browder to put in the chat specifically how we can assist. 
because we definitely want to assist. We want to do our work. And the, the more you know of what your work is involved in, the better you can do your work, which means you got to study. My grandmother's favorite verse in the Bible was from Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself a workman that needeth not be ashamed. So in other words, if you study, you don't have an excuse for not knowing. As my husband always said, do some finding out. And he said, there's always somebody <laughs> more knowing than you. So you got to always be on your toes when you speak in front of people, prepare, read the books. I don't have all of his books. I have a few, but I know we're going to have some in, in LA and I intend to buy his latest book that was done in 2020. So with that, I give it back to Brother Singor. Well, Thank Queen you. Mother Mary, coming from you, as, as as most of us in here know, you the Queen Mother. Yeah. And you know, you 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 said despite the technology, you got to write it down. And I yeah. want I, I want to stress that to y'all because you know I, uh, our young brothers and sisters do need to read their way up. Uh, yeah. And you know, when I graduated, when I was in high school, I, I hated to read. When I got out of high school and got a little conscious and heard about people like Garvey, like Dr. King, like Malcolm, and I started reading what they did, I, 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 hey, I haven't stopped reading now. Right. In fact, I read so much now, I read at night until I fall asleep. But without any further ado, Mama Tendai of Adasi, you're with us now. And uh, you know, uh, you know how it goes. So. That's all right. Yes, we can, and we can see you. Go ahead, Mama Tendai. Okay, I had to reconnect through my phone. G Gmail, uh, Google went down. You know I'm down here in North Kakalaki, and I make the joke that there's only one satellite for the entire state. So, Brother Tony, forgive me, please. I've been trying to get back in ever since I was sitting there, and all of a sudden the computer went blank, and then that was it. I've been struggling since, so I'm on my phone now. So uh, I just want to share with you from our Dasi perspective about our dearly departed brother Renoko Rashidi. I want to thank you, Brother Tony, because you know I always watch everything that you do. I participate in everything that you have online. I'm so grateful that you and Brother Renoko did things virtually so that those of us who are in the wilderness out here, like in North Carolina, can at least participate. And I take my little coins, my little pennies to try to support you because one of the things that we must do is support each other so that yeah. the work can continue. And so as we begin to uh, celebrate our dearly departed brother, uh, I, I want to say that we're going to engage in something that I learned from Sister Chen Sara yesterday, and that is unk-versation instead of conversation, as the unk-versation is, is communication about life. So we want to celebrate him and his importance and his legacy, um, and beginning with the mere fact that everything that is African is grounded in spirituality. Yes. Everything. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I want to say about Brother Bonoco is that he not only identified Africans around the world, mm -hmm. but more importantly, he also helped each of the Africans in the places where he visited understand and be able to identify themselves and their connectedness to Africa, mm -hmm. the continent, and her people. He helped them to be able to self-identify. Mm -hmm. He reached outside the conversation of, Pan of the Pan-African community to teach and to share, just as his forebearers did, Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, Chancellor Williams, A.J. Rogers, Dr. Welsing, Dr. Newton, all of them did the same, and he followed in their footsteps. Mm -hmm. His love for Africa and African people, and especially for African women, in particular manifested in all of his teachings and in his sharings. And we African women, as a result of that, have been the beneficiaries of his love and his scholarship mm -hmm. as he has recognized and venerated and taught about our history as well as our current contributions to civilization. Mother Renoko understood and he insisted to place African women not only as the mothers of humanity but also as co-creators innovators, administrators, leaders, idealists of world civilization, not just mothers, although that is the important part where we begin as those who brought about the ability 
for the world to be created. Mm -hmm. He understood that African culture did the same in terms of the way that he venerated African women in that the majority of our African ethnicities are matrilineal rather than patrilineal, tracing the heritage through the mother's line. Mm -hmm. We women of Adasi are indebted to him and his scholarship for his recognition of us and our work. And on a personal note, I had the privilege of bringing Brother Rashidi to Coppin State many years ago, because you all know I've been down here now, 1st of July, July 1st, I've been here in North Carolina for 16 years. So that you know it was some time ago when I was at Coppin State, when Brother Renoko came. But after he has departed, my friends and colleagues who remain at Coppin State called me to remind me of when he visited Coppin and the impression that he made upon them. I also was able then to take him to everyone's place and introduce him to Nati. And from then on, he did workshops, you know, for the community with Nati and appeared on the radio. Additionally, when Eureka and I uh, had the opportunity to visit Nigeria for the conference that celebrated the 42 nationalities of Nigeria, there was another conference that was a part of that major which was called slavery and its aftermath. And it was in another town. So we went to this other town to participate in that conference and who was speaking when they opened the door and we walked in, but brother Renoko Rashidi. And he stopped what he was doing to recognize us and to call me by name, which shows how he dealt with African women, how he revered us, how he saw us. So right in the middle of his lecture, he stopped and recognized us. So I just want to say that he not only talked about and lectured about African women as our family, as part of our family, as part of the whole that brings us together, but he lived it and everything that he did and everything that he said. And so I just want to thank you, Baba Renoko. Thank you, ancestors for sharing him with us. Thank you, ancestors, for this magnificent being that you have allowed to walk among us and to teach us. We pray that you celebrate his joining you and that you provide him with a place of honor among you. We honor it here. We honor him and we venerate him. We are indebted for him, for his work and his commitment to us and to complete the law of reciprocity we must commit to him and the continuation of his work. As shared with me in dreams, we each are supposed to continue the work in the way each of us knows how to do, in the way that each of us has been commissioned to do as part of our responsibility in this plane of consciousness. And as Dr. Clark has told us and has said, be the best that we can be. In closing, I just say, thank you, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Mama Tendai, you know, thank you so much. And you know what? Despite the technology and the glitches, our Blacktricity always going to come through. And you, oh. you and you demonstrate that all the time, Mama. I just, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for your patience and thank everybody else for their patience. And Mama Mary ste stepped in for you. So we made sure that we put a goddess sister in there along with you. So without, and, and, and without any further ado, uh, I, I'm going to bring this brother on from LA because uh, we're waiting on my brother David Horn, but he has, I don't know if he's joined us yet, but I'm going to bring my good brother on, Obi. And for those who don't know, Obi is not only an artist, an activist, he's a baba and has three beautiful daughters. And he's there with his wife. I saw his wife there. So Obi, in your time, you can let America have some words to share too. So without any further ado, Obi had a good relationship with, with Baba Renoko. He's gonna to talk to us about that. But my brother Obi. Peace, 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 peace. One love, uh, Baba Sengor. Um, this is an exciting day. Um, I, I'm honored to be here today to speak to everybody and share my little part um, and my understanding and my the, the time, the blessed time that I had to relate with um, Baba Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Um, I want to thank the UNIA, 
Um, obviously, I want to thank um, you, Baba Singor, and your um, black electricity as always coming down the pike. Um, uh, and I want to thank uh, all the esteemed guests, brothers and sisters from across the world that are on this today. Um, they say I got 10 minutes. I can be, my wife tells me I can be long winded, um, but I'm gonna try to uh, not take y'all too far, but get, get to the point. Is that all right? If I, if I, if I build up a little something just to get to the point. Hey, look, keep your vibes rolling, brother. You know, you know how we roll, man. You know, I can't, I ain't gonna put no plug in your time. Just go ahead. I'll let you know, though, in a positive way. I appreciate that. Well, my name is Brother Obi, for those that don't know, also known as Salty 2 com This is my wife, Aminika Shepsu, yes. and business partner, and the mother single of four children. We have four daughters. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'm originally from Washington, D.C. Uh, shout out to D.C., uh, chocolate, original Chocolate City there. But now I live in Los Angeles, California, um, where Renoko Rashidi uh, originally is from. Um, I'm a, a, a member of the Osiris Society. We're a priesthood in Osiris Society, but um, we've been member. I'm a television producer. We're television producers, directors. Uh, I'm a rap rap artist. All kinds of things um, in, along the artistic line. But uh, we we've had the longest running Kwanzaa event in D.C. for the youth for the last I don't know 30 plus years. Uh, every year Ujima Night. Check it out. Uh, if you're ever in D.C. Or, or, or log on to the stream, we want to invite everybody worldwide to that. Um, but this goes, this, 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 this relationship goes way back. And I'm going to start off here. About two years ago here in Los Angeles, maybe two, three years ago, the Caress Center uh, in Los Angeles, which is one of the many uh, meccas of cultural expression, uh, African spirituality, where a lot of lectures are. Uh, we went to see Ashwa Kwesi. Brother Ashwa Crazy speak there before. It was amazing. Um, I was excited because Baba Renoko was supposed to be coming. And um, my daughters hadn't met Baba Renoko, Renoko Rashidi, and this was gonna be an exciting, exciting time. I've been talking about him for a long time. And uh, we get down there on this Sunday and for some reason something happened and, and, and he wasn't there. And uh, we were disappointed, but because um, my wife, for example, wanted to go on some of the tours. She was really eager about going down to see some of the Olmec uh, things in Mexico and in uh, the Guatemala area. Um, and so it was disappointing, but we knew that the connection was strong spiritually and um, no matter what, we're attempting to live the life that's a reflection of that kind of blacktricity, Baba Senghor. And so I start with that and then take you back in the day. Um, I was raised in D.C., uh, Washington, D.C. And in the early days, I went to, you know, the urban elementary schools um, and they passed me in my reading classes. I went to Morgan back before D.C. was gentrified. I went to Morgan <laughs> on 18th Street. And, you know, like a lot of students, they would pass you, they just kind of pass you along, you know. And when I took my reading classes, I was getting passed along. And my grandmother, who at the time was a community activist, Mama Asante Ayatoro, um, who's done a lot of work in the cultural community, activism and uh, community in Washington, D.C., and she was also an English teacher. She said, no, take him out and put him in this white school <laughs> just to get his reading on par. <laughs> so she puts me in Janney, second grade, first year uh, in Janney, second grade, they put me back because they said I couldn't read enough. I couldn't read good enough. They put me back. They took me out of Janney a year later because they said, how can you put a black child? I was the only black boy in the school. How could you put a black child back in second grade? Well, they took me out and I was immediately put into Nation House Positive Action Center, Nation House Watoto, a school that was founded by a bunch of extremely conscious African people. One of them um, who transitioned about a, a year ago called Baba Ajay Okoto, um, who was one of the founding instructors, him, his wife, and a, a lot of other people that I can't get into naming right now, um, laid a foundation for a school that was one of the second oldest, maybe after Ujamaa Shule, Pan-African schools in the country. And let me tell you something, at that school, the children there could read far better than the children in the white school. They were light years ahead. So if I thought I was behind before um, <laughs> at Janney, by the time I got to Watoto, I was extremely behind in reading 
the kids that were three grades under me. That's how impressive, that's how this school rolled in terms of the education at that time. And it was ex exemplary. Um, and it was just absolutely amazing for me. And one of the first things that they gave us, books to read, happened to be Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. This was a book that I would later find out, of course, was one of the turning points for Dr. Renoko Rashidi, Destruction of Black Civilization. It's also the book I tell every black person that's trying to find out something about something, where to start. What's the starting book? I always say, man, get Destruction of Black Civilization. Let's start right there. Um, hey, and let me say this also while I'm at this point. Of course, I got to give a shout out to Dr. <laughs> Dr. Tony Browder, because the first book that I ever gave my wife was from the Browder Files. So we just want to put that out there. That's she can <laughs> she can sign out, sign off on that, right? Yeah, that was my first Kwanzaa gift. First Kwanzaa gift, right? So this book was a book that like eight year olds and nine year olds were reading Destruction of Black Civilization. Um, and then we were listening to Dr. John Henrik Clark every day on, on audio, some cassette tapes. Then we were listening to uh, Dr. Yosef Benyakamin. And these were the lessons that we were learning from Baba Ajay, from Mama Kuya, from the people at the school, Mama Fia, for everybody at the school, we were learning some deep, deep, deep lessons. So it set me up for high school. When I graduated and went to the, back to the regular All-American High School, my first book report was on Ivan Van Sertima's, um, They Came Before Columbus. And because of my rearing at Nation House by Toto, this was second nature to me, but I was bringing it to teachers, my uh, European history teacher who had never even heard of Dr. Ivan Van Sertima and definitely hadn't heard of It Came Before Columbus. Uh, and the history of Africans, the o Omex, et cetera, et cetera, in Mexico. And so after I left there, excited and intrigued by the fact that black people were all over the world, not just Africa, because a lot of us at that time were just thinking about Africa. The fact that we were in South America, something in my nature understood that that had to be a reality that something already knew. And I, already, I always say that, that uh, if you look at Time Magazine back in 1980 something, they put Adam and Eve as black people on the front of Time Magazine, but they had jerry curls, of course. Um, but we already knew that was us. We didn't need Time Magazine to tell us that. After I left uh, high school, or around the time I was in high school, and the initial book, I had done the uh, book report, I come and I see the front of the book, The African Presence in Early Asia by Renoko Rashidi. Now this book just blew me away mostly because of the cover. Here we are, I had just done a book report on South America, but here we are in Asia and all these black folk on the cover. And I didn't know if the picture was in, it was, if it was from India or if it was from Cambodia or wherever it was at, I knew instinctively that Africans were worldwide and that I had to be a part of that. Now, like you, Baba Senghor, I was never a reader. Reader was not my thing, it was never, my, my thing. My grandmother was an English teacher. She was very disappointed and tried to get me to read novels, like, you know, all kinds of really beautiful, colorful novels, but, I, but they never did anything for me. It wasn't until reading Dr. Renoko's book, it wasn't until reading uh, Ivan Van Sertima, it wasn't until reading um, Chancellor Williams, et cetera, et cetera, that I actually grew uh, an urge and a need for reading. My wife will tell you today that I'm always reading something. Uh, by the way, uh, there are a lot of new books out there, a lot of new content that, that's out there that um, we all need to seek and read and find out about. Fast forward to 2012. In 2012, I was in charge of crisis for foster care system in Baltimore and DC for an organization called Martin Pollock. But I was also, through that time, I had become a, music, a television producer, music producer, rapper, artist, a lot of different hats I wear, father of four. But one of my side jobs, I had a business, was a foster care crisis intervention. I was the guy that saved the homes, 99.9% .9 black homes in Baltimore and um, in D.C. And I, and I also taught a media uh, arts program, which was African-centered and African-based. And we also worked in the child prison system, uh, which was the detention system at Cheltenham out there in Maryland, um, where we also taught uh, a program. A media arts program which embodied culture history 
words and information from Noko, brother uh, Tony Browder, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and to see and understand that here I was, someone who grew up in this culture of understanding of history, of being proud of knowing, uh, knowing thyself, and understand that our youth were massively missing that piece was a disparaging thing. And it was something that I used to be my engine for teaching and uplifting. But a few years later, I went into a program where I was in charge of programs for black men over 50, where these black men were homeless over 50. And since I was in charge of programs, of course, I was going to do stuff like teach them things and see where they were on an educational level as far as their knowledge of self. Lo and behold, these black men are over 50. A lot of them were on, were on or off drugs. A lot of them, were, most all of them were homeless. They had gone through a lot of different life challenges, especially at that time, health issues, etc. But there was an absence also of that know thyself thing, just like I'm sure all of us in here know. So here we are dealing with children on one hand that don't know thyself. And now we are dealing with people older than me, 50, 60, 70, 80, that are still struggling with this air issue and are still dealing with trauma from the 60s and 50s and the kinds of things and relationships that they had to have in corporate America or not in corporate America, all tying into race. And there was a big hole in their, uh, obviously in their education and understanding. So of course, having read Renoko, having read all these great scholars from the, from the past, I grabbed information and would, would be presenting that to them on a regular basis. Information like, the black people of the Andaman Islands, showing them these images, and they were blown away. They couldn't believe it. Information like the black people of the Vanuatu uh, in the South Pacific, tying in the black people of Australia, tying in black folk all over the world. And a lot of them wouldn't believe that I was telling the truth until I spoke to a sister and said, and she was like, you know, I know Renoko Rashidi. I said, you know Renoko? I said, well, is there, is there a way we can get them to come in here? He said, I don't know. Let's see. So Renoko was in transition from doing a presentation in Baltimore. He had one day of rest before he went to France. <laughs> we had to beg him very small in a very small level, but he was like, huh, you know what? Of course, of course, of course. He came in graciously, bought all of his, uh, his weaponry of information, his pictures and uh, video clips and stuff like that, his laptop, and graciously, the first thing he asked me, he said, are you, are you sure this, this audience, what is this audience? I said, you know, these, these brothers don't know nothing. They're not cultural in no kind of way. I said, but Baba Renoko, I've been priming them for like the last year. I said, they ready. And plus, they're going to respect you more than respect me because I'm, I'm, I'm some young whippersnapper. So he was closer to their age group and in the, some of their age groups. So we brought him in and he showed pictures from Egypt pictures from South America, pictures from all over and explained it so eloquently. And by the end of the night, all you could feel was pride and silence. Those are the words I'm left with, pride and silence. Um, he, they were stunned and they were awakened. And to this day, when I'm in DC and I stop by to check on the brothers that are still alive, still there, they'd be like, yo, this is the brother that brought that guy in here that just lit everything up, that changed everything for us, that just uplifted us. And they're, they're, they're still moved and so thankful to this day about that. Last thing I'm gonna leave you with on that note, this idea that we as black people, as Pan-African people, that we have to broaden our, our reach in terms of the delivery system through which to get the information to the people and not just giving the information to just the cultural community, but there's a whole nother community that would appreciate it and would get so much from it and can be elevated from that. And he understood that at that point that we have to reach outside. This wasn't some Pan-African organization. These were just homeless black men that it totally changed their lives. Lastly, and I got to grab my little note down here, is um, something I was looking at when I think it was on the Rock Newman show. And he said, one of the main things I would say is talk to each other. My grandmother used to say, not everybody no one organization or people have all the answers. And a lot of us can live like that. We can get in our bubble, we get, we get, we get blocked off. But there are so many um, organizations that uh, can are going to and are contributing to the, sh the struggle of the uplifting of the African people worldwide. 
One thing I saw about Renoko is that he reminded me of a Olmec warrior on a mission to go wherever his words would be heard to uplift the people, wherever it was necessary. And so we can learn a lot from that. Yeah. I'm sorry, and I, and I, and I talk because I had an agenda, but go, go, go ahead. Well, I don't have an agenda, <laughs> but I just want to express um, peace and blessings, Baba, and to, and to everyone here, peace and blessings. Speak up loud. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just want to express um, to Baba Renoko's family that I am, just like everyone else, so thankful, so grateful for his presence in all of our lives, for his continuous teachings, um, also to Baba Anthony Browder. It, that, his book, The Browder Foul, changed my life. When my husband bought it for me for Kwanzaa, my first Kwanzaa, I went and purchased it for everyone at my job. And, you know, it, it impacted me just like Vinoco's books impacted me. And so we gave all of that to our daughters, to our children and to any child we touched. You know, when it came to um, education, it got to a point where we realized we can't send our children to public school, so we homeschooled our daughters. And I'm, I'm blessed with historians like Baba Renoko Rashidi, Dr. Renoko Rashidi, and the, the many that came before him and those that are also here still doing the work because I was able to take those teachings and, and apply them, create a curriculum for my homeschool. And that, I mean, I'm endlessly grateful and thankful for that. And so it's, it's just with uh, peace, love, humility and gratitude that I say thank you. And, um, and I, 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 I personally have a high level of love in my heart. And just like the mama said before me, those moments, so many moments when Baba, Dr. Renoko Rashidi would go on Facebook and put a flower there to remind us that we are beautiful, powerful black women. Even though I'm a woman that knows it, okay, I know it without a doubt, it uplifted me. And the fact that we can go on Facebook at any moment and scroll down and see that even right now, just will speak volumes for eternity. And I personally wanna ask anyone who has the power to please do not delete his Facebook account. There's so much there to learn, you know, continuously. You know, just like you can go to his website, people can be continuously taught just from his posts on Facebook, you know. So, Dwao, thank you, Madasi. Well, thank Peace you, lessons. And, and, and Lisa May, I apologize. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all got a, almost a basketball squad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you know, I, I want to especially thank y'all because you know, you all uh, are a perfect example of how the X generation should be moving. And I hope y'all don't mind me putting you in that generation, but that's the generation I put y'all in. <laughs> and y'all are a perfect example because the millenniums, y'all four daughters, <laughs> mm -hmm. beautiful. And so without any further ado, we're going to keep it rolling with that generation. But we're going to jump over to the UK with my good brother, Ambassador of uh, the UK, Brother Shakara. Tendamwari, Garvey lives. Tendamwari, brother, Tendamwari. Messiah lives. Um, First of all, greetings um, um, and welcome. Sorry, greetings to all of my elders, my brothers and sisters um, on the panel and listening in. I bring greetings on behalf of the Al Kebel and Revivalist movement, our leadership, and our spiritual leader, who also happens to be my father, brother leader Bandaka. You'll forgive me because it's ten to two in the morning over here, um, and so we are we are already on the day of the birthday of the prophet. Um, and so we're gathering in the morning. So forgive me for, for, for sharing and uh, departing soon thereafter. <laughs> Can't want to get some, some rest because uh, I've got an early morning. Um, but it is a blessing um, nonetheless to be with um, you all um, to honor Baba Renoko Rashidi on this day. Um, and on his passing, you know, the, 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 there are so many things that could have come to me. But my first uh, thought 
was that I want people to know that he was a Garvey that he is a Garvey yeah mm -hmm. many people know him for uh, his work in terms of traveling his books and his teaching and his lectures and we in the African community UK got to know him very well he visited here many times and importantly he didn't just visit London uh, the, the Birmingham African community in the UK got to know him well. Manchester, I believe he traveled to Leeds uh, a couple of times as well. So we got to know him very well. And in fact, last year he was intended to visit. Um, <clears throat> and I was going to be one of the hosts of an event uh, in London. And we were going to have Baba Renoko alongside the author of When We Ruled, the great book When We Ruled brother Robin Walker um, and with all of the amount of times that Baba Renoko had traveled to the UK that uh, you know double bill had never taken place uh, for various different reasons and when I got the call saying can you host a, an event for Baba Renoko I said yes but I want to put brother Robin Walker on it I asked him and he agreed uh, and uh, the lockdown was to come uh, and divert those plans and so I feel a little bit you know like you know something that should have happened didn't quite happen um, because that double bill has never happened anywhere in the world and it would have been powerful to have those great historians um, on the bill but I want to give thanks for our Baba. He's very humble, you know. You could always get him on the email. <laughs> very, very accessible for the international figure that he was. Um, and as I as I alluded to a while ago, one of the first thoughts that I had was the fact that he's a Garvey. Um, that, and, and I was able to share many of these panels with him in the last year or two, you know, with you all um, and share that space with him and learn and just get the, 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 the overstanding um, of how committed he was to organizing, yeah? Which is important because so many of our scholars are not associated with organization uh, or people don't know that they're associated with organization. Um, and he was card carrying, he was dues paid, and he had title profile uh, and status at the same time as well. Um, and so I'm, I'm very um, inspired by that legacy. Um, I've, I've got, you know, artistry that I'm still yet to put out um, that is inspired by listening to Baba Ronoko Rashidi deliver lectures about how much African artifacts are in museums in Europe and America, for example, you know, taking notes and thinking, no, nah, I need to do a song about this. I need to write a poem about this. And I haven't even finished that yet, but that was years ago because uh, I'm still researching that. But the genesis of that idea came with listening to Baba Renoko Rashidi, um, you know, so I want to give thanks for that and also to bear testament to the fact that every sister that I know in the UK has always spoke of the love that he has for African women. I want to shout out my sister in particular, um, Sister Shola, who was going to host the, the Birmingham leg of that same event uh, last year, um, who's a young sister like myself, uh, and, and she said that in her reflection as well, that he was a great admirer and respecter of African women. And in fact, the subject of his lecture last year was supposed to be Queens of the Nile, yeah? Um, so, I mean, I don't know, there, there, there's so much that can be said, um, uh, just, and there's so much that can be said, but I think the greatest testimony to his legacy, as we always say in moments like these, is to continue the work, um, not just in the scholarship, but in the organization, and the organization serving the scholarship. Um, years ago, I was blessed to be able to watch uh, a, a, a presentation on YouTube from uh, a brother from India who was actually introduced to the community Africans in America by Baba Renoko Rashidi and learn uh, about the, pre the African presence in India and also the political movements, yes, yeah? it's, it's very important. This is very important to me that he traveled there learning about the history, yes, um, of our people, but also took the time and the responsibility to share 
their story with us, not just to go and say, well, listen, we was here, yeah? And we, you know, cause we do that a lot. Black people are everywhere, <laughs> you know? We, we, we was in Australia, we was in the Americas and, and we get a good ego boost, yeah? Off of that kind of talk. But to really expose the living realities of our people in India to us and to take responsibility for exposing, allowing us to hear from them directly, yes, uh, is, is one of the greatest testimonies to the work of Baba Ranoko Rashidi. And it's probably more important than all the books that he wrote, yeah, and all the lectures that, 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 he, that he gave that he was able to provide a direct link between Africans uh, in the UK, Africans in America, and our family um, in the nation called India. Um, and so I, 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 say, I think that there's a great example there for all of us um, as Garveyites, um, as Pan-Africanists, as universal African nationalists. And so I give thanks for the life and the legacy of Baba uh, Ranoko Rashidi. One of the images that you saw in the montage earlier was Baba Ranoko carrying the world with newspaper, which uh, is published by the al Kebala Revivalist Movement, which is my organization. And uh, so that is that is our favorite image of him for obvious reasons. Um, and it was it was a, it was an honor, you know, um, to have him read and appreciate uh, our work on these shores. Um, I give thanks for the time, uh, my elders, my brothers and sisters, giving thanks to Baba Sengo. Um, and yeah, I got I got. Uh, I got a question that, you, that, you, that you're going to ask me to do something. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, Chakra, you know, I really appreciate you. Thank you for taking time out. I, I know you just got back from Ghana a few weeks ago. Yes, Baba. Baba. Yes, Baba. Yes, Baba. I also Mosiah lives, and I know y'all going to have a big program for Mosiah, and I know you're yes. into that day right now. So I want to yes. thank you for yes. standing up and taking time for coming in. And, yes. and you, know, you, don't have, you don't owe no apologies if you got to check out, man. Get some sleep because I, <laughs> I know your young son is going to wake you up early anyway. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so Mosiah, and we really appreciate you. And I want everybody to know, just like you were talking about Renoko, what people do not know, they're going to know. The Alcabalan yes, Movement is the Mosiah division of the UNIA. And you yes, are not only the youth ambassador, you are the ambassador of West Africa because now your baba is uh, 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 in a higher position. And I, yes, and I did a radio show with them a few days ago with Brother Haru, the president of the division, and your yes, baba. Sir. And I want to thank yes, you for taking time out. That was a powerful show. So without any further ado, we're going to keep it going. You may want to stick around and listen to Dr. Chenzera because she'll help. She'll help. Almost you definitely. Your dream. And then right after that is Chief O'Day. And then we're going right. to Dr. David Horn. I see he's with us now. So without yes, any baba. further ado, I'm happy to bring to you all. And I'm going to bring to you all the way I bring her and all the goddesses forward. You know, hey, the goddess of a perfect black, without any further ado, Dr. Chinzara Kahini. Greetings, Hotep family. It's always an honor and a privilege to be in a gathering with the royals, the regals, the most majestic, powerful, omnipotent, mm, loving family of our Como se dice eso? Blacktricity, African style. Yeah? It's a very humbling opportunity to give words of power, words of strength, Baba. honoring Baba, Professor Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Because I remember when I was in, <laughs> we're going to have this joke. So I have to start with the joke first. It was a conversation with the honorable ancestor, my professor at the time, at Rutgers University. <laughs> and there's not a way to describe how Professor Renoko embraced and engaged with his I wouldn't call it an apprenticeship, but it was it's authentically a scribe initiation with our most illustrious professors, whether it was Professor Dr. Ivan Van Sertema around the Rutgers vibe, whether it was around another powerful ancestor Baba Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan, whether it was around the East, 
in New York around Baba, <laughs> Dr. Another powerful ancestor, John Henry Clark. And I was the one that would always go and sit close to people's feet and always make sure I was in a very humbling posture so I could just listen. I could just listen. Because what Renoko Baba now Maketu Renoko shared was because he was pretty, pretty, pretty rough back in the moments. And he would say things unapologetically like brown, rock, with no, no filter. So it's powerful to reflect on his greatness, to reflect on his hmm, voice and the intensity in which he took his research very seriously whether it was through the lens of the Eurocentric academia, which he could easily dispel or not, yeah? So I start in that space so the persons recognize that as young as I may look, I'm a little bit more youthful than most people think, but I do have a few years, just a few years as a mother, as a grandmother. When I reflect on our brother, I reflect on some conversations we had definitely in Compton, where we used to just go back and forth. I thought it was friendly discourse, but he was really focused on how important it was for us to have a re-education across the board amongst our sister and, and brethren around the globe so that we did not see things only through a lens of North, South, and East, West, but we saw things in its holistic presence on the fact that African ancestral indigenous culture permeated every part of the earth, like literally every part of the earth. And he made a personal livication, obviously, that we're all benefiting from to be able to bring that knowledge and to bring that wise counsel and to bring that science, even when it challenged quote unquote academia, period. So with that, I also remember some humorous jokes that he used to share around the children's space environment in Compton, right on Peck Street and the influences that his work, his teaching in that community, the impact it had on young developing teachers working and offering context and content for the Institute of Positive Education, the various institutes for black institutions that were developing, yes, in the 48 contiguous, but it permeated throughout the entire hemisphere as well as in Africa, as well as in Eurasia and around the globe, all those places that we overlooked. And he kept bringing his information and he kept strengthening it over these decades upon decades of his work. And for that, we're very grateful. For that, we can only extend prayers and love and my article blessings to his family for sharing his energy, his time with us, because he made serious sacrifices to be able to do this work. So with that, I will just share a concise voice offering because it's very powerful where he chose to leave the body. And that's really ultimately his choice, irrespective of all that surrounds his choice. So our family village nation community, and I extend this on behalf of parent Ankh M. Smaitawi, extends a lot of love, a lot of healing strength to the family of Makeru Asada, because he has moved into that realm. Bruno Kurashini, during this time of celebrating his life and holding his essence so that it will not be Troubled, it can move freely into the amenta amongst the chrestau. We recognize our beloved brother as a 
revolutionary, unapologetic African who shared his scholarship grounded in superior evidence that he shared every walk to the best of his ability. And we honor and respect that. And our charge is to continue to bring that into fruition in all the works that we share as we honor him, as we replicate, duplicate exponentially what he has brought to humanity as a grounding. We're asking that the hearts of those amongst us remain in honor so that his heart can remain as light as a feather as he goes through the halls of Ma'ati so that he can truly navigate beyond the truth, justice, order, reciprocity, balance, divine righteousness, and harmony that allows for him to be welcomed and received amongst our most regal, most majestic, most illustrious ancestors. We embrace the spirit so that he can traverse into the heights of heights amongst the ever-present worthy, and I say that term seriously, worthy royal ancestors so that he too can be received and continue, la otra palabra, continue to share this particular hymn of praise in his honor. It's the Hekau em Asar em Ma'at, a hymn of praise to Asar, dweller in Amenetet, un nefer, within Aptun. We ask that Asar Hrunoko Hrashiri, the triumphant one, is able to say, Hail, Neb Ah, my Heru, traversing in eternity. May his existence be forever. May he dwell amongst kings of kings, nobles of nobles, lords of lords, sovereign of sovereigns, prince of princes, Neter of the Netsuru, who live with. In so that they may know and come to the net to ruin them. May a seat be made for him within nature's inner earth world. May he be adored with images from his cow. May those who are among those who come for millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of years allow for him to traverse as a maqueru amongst the royals. May he arrive into that port that which his body, which is now in ascension, may arise without delay beyond Tamari. May he be granted that that may come to him in all greatness, as well as little, as well as great. May he be granted the entrance and the exit into the Duat, so that his inner realms of his own ka may authentically be praised, welcomed, honored, respected, and we continue to give these voice offerings of praise and adoration for his greatness, for all that he made is his sacrifice here on earth. We give libations, we give offerings, we offer sacred spaces and places for him to return to the rest of them. We ask for voice offerings of scented oils, divine incense, alabaster, fine linen, food offerings, libations of water, of earth, fermented wines, and all things beautiful and pure, so that he may return to the Netara and live on and live ever on. We give praises, we give praises, so that he may join those ancestors and continue to provide power and attributions of sacred principles of the Netara amongst our elders, amongst our ancestors, amongst our youth, and all amongst the living into the duat for eternities upon eternities upon eternities. And again, we give our blessing to the family and we're saying this blessing from a space of ma'at, from a space of jehuti from a space of herukuhuti because safety and security and protection are essential. And we share this so that all great things that he has presented 
and left upon the earth may be respected for eternity. Do I want her? We're very much so giving thanks and would have. Hmm, appreciate everyone just keeping that his thoughts, his energy stay in ascension and do not do anything to interfere with his ability to just soar and fly and remain in ascension. Do I want to? Give thanks, Dr. Chenzera. You know, I uh, really appreciate you, 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 you uh, taking us on a higher level. You're Do I want to? You're absolutely, you're absolutely right on it. And uh, we're going to keep rolling along, you all. And uh, we're going to try to do a round robin at the end. But without any further ado, we're going to jump to the continent to my brother from the Black Star Action Network International, from the Gullah Movement, and from the UNIA. He's the West Africa ambassador, none other than Chief Ajamu. Fade. Chief. Yes, greetings, oh, greetings. Oh, opinion with you too, all right? So that's not, it's not, it's not, it's not just chief, it's chief and our dear president of the division in, 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 mm -hmm. in Sierra Leone in Freetown. And of course, for those that don't know, Freetown is the first town that we return back to once we started finding ourselves. So without any further ado, chief. Absolutely, greetings, greetings. Thank you for the introduction, Baba. Um, me, just like you said, I'm Chief Fodea Jamu Mestere. And this is my wife, Kenya Malike Mansure. Mm -hmm. um, we both serve as um, UNIA members, and I particularly serve as the West African ambassador, while she serves as the local um, Gullah Dugu 232 division president here in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Um, I repatriated here 2013. She's been here since 2015. And we've been rocking and rolling, man, just trying to expand um, what Baba Singo would call the Blacktricity, you know, um, extend it back to the brothers and sisters here in this nation and make sure that uh, we have a, a clear passage home and that we got some operations on the ground. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to address um, this audience. Definitely um, what I would consider the cream of the crop in terms of our leadership right now at the time in this world. So um, I don't take it lightly and I really appreciate it. Um, Kenya is here, so I won't, I won't say too much for myself. We have to break the time down, but I did have a few things that I wanted to offer as well. Um, first of all, I never had the opportunity to, uh, to meet Baba Runoko, but I felt like I feel like um, we had the opportunity to work, to do work together through the UNIACL. Um, of course, him being our traveling ambassador for the Rehabilitating Committee 2020 and uh, me serving as the West African ambassador. But um, despite the fact that I was never able to meet him physically, we did have a few encounters. And um, it was always good. Um, in fact, I want to share one with you so you guys can kind of feel my own vibration when it comes to Baba um, being a fellow ambassador and admirer of his work. Um, first of all, in 2015, when my wife first came, I took her to a beach here in Freetown called Lumney Beach. Now, Lumney Beach is on the far west end of Freetown. It's like the most western point of this coastline. And, um, Right there, slim in the middle of it, is a statue that was um, given to the Republic of Sierra Leone from the government of Egypt. And um, the statue is a comedic statue. So my, my wife and I, we took some photos there and I was sharing them on Facebook. And um, Baba Renuku hit me up, inbox. And I was surprised, I'm like, what? What is he hitting me up for? You know, I understand who he is, but you know, I'm just a small fry. What are you doing looking at my page? And, um, but he was interested. He said, hey, bro, um, where are you at? Where is that statue located? He wanted to know. And I told him, he was like, wow, that's very interesting. Um, that was the first encounter I ever had with him in terms of being able to communicate, at least psychologically, at least mentally, virtually. Um, later on, I believe it was just May this year that I see one of his posts where he was saying that 
He had been to every English speaking country in West Africa, except for Liberia and Sierra Leone, and that he was looking forward to, to knocking them two out. So um, just to piggyback off of what Ambassador Shakara was saying, I felt like um, it was something that was going to happen that didn't happen. And um, for that purpose, you know, I believe it is possible to miss somebody that you never met, you know? Um, it's, just, it's, it's unfortunate for him not to be here in the physical with us anymore. But at the same time, um, we've gained a very powerful ancestor. And, um, and I believe that Baba, Baba Renuku's spirit will continue to live on through his work. Um, Baba, I mean, uh, uh, Ambassador Shakara said a few things that I just really did, had to dumb down on um, and double up on. First of all, he spoke about the fact that Baba Renuku was and will always be a Garveyite. Um, something that typically when you're known more, more for your academic work, um, people don't recognize your organizational work as much. But um, just like what we know now, he was card carrying, dual paying, and actively working. If he was in India, he was in India as a traveling ambassador of the UNICL RC 2022, wherever he was, because that's what he was representing. He was representing this government. And um, it's, such a, it's such an important part to highlight because we need more organizers. We need more traveling organizers. We need more traveling ambassadors. Um, every once in a while in our history, we get a, 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 a personality to emulate. We get a personality worthy of our emulation, someone that we can take after, someone that we can look at and pick apart and give to our boys and our girls. Like when you say the aspects of his character that valued the African woman, highlight the African woman. When, you when people express how much of a loving father he was, you know, when Brother Shakara talks about how he didn't just go to where everybody was popular at in London. No, he went right on down to the ghetto too. You know, very, very important because these are distinguishing characteristics of a bona fide Garveyite in the 21st century doing the work of our ancestors. And so um, with that, I just wanna say, um, you know, on one hand we say, a people without knowledge of their history is like a tree without its roots. But then on the other hand, there is Baba Renuka Rashidi among Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, Ivan Van Sertema, Katha Wakatha, that assume the greatest responsibility to research and educate not only us, not only Africans, but remind the world of our past, present, and future greatness in this world. We are the beginning and we will always be here. Um, lastly, I found it very beneficial from the academic work, from the research and the travels. And it, it really deeply impacted me, much like, um, what's his brother's name? Uh, 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 I can't think of his name now. He wrote the book uh, from, from Superman to Man. Oh. Uh, yeah, J.A. Rogers. His style of research and the way that he um, relayed the message to the people, it really, really, really stuck out like, J.A. Rogers to me as well, um, in terms of really focusing on the blackness of people to connect all back to Africa. There's certain distinctive traits that if you've got them, we know that you come from the motherland and utilizing that as a basis to highlight the fact that we do exist in India and Southeast Asia. I love the fact that Baba Mosi is always putting out um, New Guinea the struggle of our brothers and sisters there, Australia, you know, um, as well as the work that Baba was doing in Central and South America and the Caribbean is a very, very powerful spirit that um, I believe we all still feel present at this moment. Um, so I, I want to be fair and honest and pass the mic over to, uh, to Mama Malinke 
and let her also say some words. Um, a few of uh, last week I had an opportunity to be on a virtual conference like this in honor of Baba. It was with um Abibi Tumi, with um with Dr. Okinimi, um, um Kambon down in Ghana. And I swear, bro, like I never knew how impactful Baba Runuku Rashidi was at the personal level. I didn't realize how many people he actually touched. But I was able to hear from his students, his friends, admirers, people in Africa who was aware of his work, who benefited from his work. You know, it was just a beautiful thing, man. So um, again, it's an honor to be here and be a part of yet another celebration on his birthday, as well as the birthday of um, the, the son of Honorable Martin Mosai Garvey, um, um, Julius Garvey, and just like Shaka Ra said, right here today, now in Sierra Leone, it's already Mosiah Day. So with yeah. that, I'll pass it to, uh, to Kenya. And she, she's coming now. She has a few words. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Greetings, Pambo. Um, I just want to thank everyone again for doing this program. It has been an eye opener for me as well as Chief, as he talked about the impact that um, the ancestor Renuku Shibi had on so many of us. I just want to um, just again give my um, condolences to who, all of our family who have been impacted by it. And again, um, I'm just looking forward to just continuing the legacy of um, the doctor. Ashe. Ashe. You know, well, let me Ashe. say. Let me say to okay. both of you all, thank you all, because I know the time is, is deep over, over there in Sierra Leone. But let me say, Chief, I really appreciate you, as, 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 as you know, and, and Kenya, I appreciate you. Uh, y'all are, are, are a serious team, just like my Holly brother and sister up top uh, here. You know, and that y'all are, y'all are the perfect example of what the X generation should look like. And, and I know, and that's no offense to those people who have not come into consciousness, because as you said, Renoko went down deep under. And believe me, all of us came from down deep under. So don't, oh, let's, yeah. don't let's don't try to rise above, you know, the critical mass. And everybody is a member of the UNIA that has African, African energy, okay. black energy. But those of us that pay our dues are responsible for the upkeep of the universal Pan-African government. And believe me, Obi, you're absolutely right. We have to close ranks with anybody doing anything for upliftment of black people. So when we talk about UNIA rehabilitating committee, that's what we're talking about. And for those that don't know, there's other UNIAs out there, but there ain't none like the UNIA ACL government rehabilitating committee because we are riding off the back of 40, 50 years of sitting under the feet of elders who've gone before us. So without any further ado, I'm going to move on to our international organizer back in LA, Professor David Horn. And I want to thank you, Chief and Kenya, for, for taking time out wee hours of the morning over there where y'all are at. So without any further ado, Dr. David Horn, our international organizer, will be in LA soon. And you know, you and Obi and them out there in that sunshine and y'all, it ain't late over there. I hope to see all of y'all beautiful faces when I come to Little Africa. Yeah, Little Africa, Little AA. I ain't looking for Los Angeles. I'm looking for Little Africa when I come on the West Coast. Without any further ado, David. <laughs> Hotel, everybody. The, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. Whenever a people are engaged in a large enterprise, they are trying to construct a large building, or they are intending to craft together a large ship to move on the ocean from one location to another. Or they are in the garden. They are about either growing food for the masses or they are about preparing food for the masses or they are about serving food for the masses so that they can be prepared to do whatever they have to do. Whenever 
one is part of an enterprise like that, you always have specialists. You always have people who help the larger enterprise move forward. We who are constantly engaged in this successive, successive enterprise to reconnect African people wherever they are in the world, to reconnect us so that we can put all of our energy together to build the world that Africans have to have. We also have our specialties. Let's concentrate just on one, because I could get off into a long lecture about this. Let's take a gardener. Let's take a person out in the dirt, shoveling the dirt out of the way to be able to prepare the ground for planting. That gardener must understand what to do when there's a snake that comes in the garden. That gardener has to understand what to do when the mosquitoes come in the garden. That gardener has to understand what it takes to be able to get the land prepared to grow so that the larger enterprise can continue. My brother Renoko Rashidi was a planter in the garden. With, within this larger enterprise of our moving into our proper place within the cosmos, we must have people who can prepare us with clear knowledge, with information that we can absorb, that we can take as energy to keep moving forward. When we talk about Dr. John Henry Clark, when we talk about um, Dr. Asa Hilliard, when we talk about Dr. Francis Crest Welsing, there are a number of people who have already come among us and they've done their time in the garden, putting the food, the information, putting it into its proper place so it can grow. There have been people who have come among us, they have done their job because we are still moving forward. When Dr. Clark was coming to the end of his life, he said, I wish I had more time. I have so much more to do. I have so much more gardening to do. I have so much more I want to contribute. Renoko Rashidi also wanted more time. But as Dr. Clark did, he utilized the time he had to give us the academic food that we need to make us strong to continue on to the goal. I agree with Brother Shakara and everybody else who has talked about Renoko Rashidi being a Gaviite for a very long time. The Renoko Rashidi that I knew came to Gaviism through Pan-Africanism. He's a Pan-Africanist before he decided to focus his growing abilities, his farmer's ability, his writing ability on being a particular kind of Pan-Africanist. I met Rashidi when I came here in 1973, when I first came to LA. We, were, we became a part of the first 
uh, cadre in the All-African People's Revolutionary Party. Renoko then left that collection and moved to the academic sphere at Compton College and got involved with other people who were creating the All African People's Conferences that brought all kinds of great scholars, Dr. Clark, et cetera, to Los Angeles and other places. What we have to do at the end of our time in the garden, or at the end of our time, if we are an architect or a builder, or at the end of our time, if we are a shipbuilder, at the end of our time, whatever we do, we must be able to say, I did my part. I did what I was supposed to do. I carried the mission forward. I did not lapse. I did not drop the ball. I did not shirk my responsibility. Renoko Rashidi was one of the best historians I've ever met. And I've met a lot of them. Some with all kinds of titles and some who should basically sit down and keep quiet for a minute. They are a bit too full of themselves. Renoko Rashidi was an excellent researcher and an excellent writer. He gave us a body of knowledge that we can use to keep working toward Pan-African unification, which we are going to get to. So as someone who was a friend of Renoko's, and sometimes it was hard being Renoko's friend, but for somebody who's been a long-term friend and colleague of Renoko Rashidi, I say, my brother, you did your part. My brother, you grew in the garden and provided us with what we needed to keep moving on. You spent your time well. You have a legacy that we will continue talking about. You did not waste your time here. Pan-Africanism is better served because Renoko Rashidi came through. Mm. Hotel, my brother, Woo. hotel. Yeah, Dr. Horn, I hope everybody was really listening because, you know, as I've always told you, Professor, you know, all the different students that you've motivated, some that I met over here on the East Coast, they always talk about how you were a thorough professor. You just took us to school. You just gave us a, a, a really basic understanding using gardening of how important Unoko's legacy is. And so I want to thank you for that. We're going to keep rolling. By the way, y'all, we are a good time. It's just past a little past 930. We got a couple more presenters and then we're going to kind of open up. But I want to thank you all who have presented thus far. And I want to turn to my good brother, Baba Mosi, who is not only the president of the Woodson Banneker Jackson Bay Division 330, but also the Minister of Information of the UNIA ACL RC 2020. Baba Mosi. Hotep, everyone. Hotep, bro. My sincere greetings and condolences to the family and close friends and all those who love Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Yeah, we can say he's, it's been a loss uh, not having him around uh, physically. But uh, we are blessed because we still have his work yeah, in the book right. and, uh, and some of the stuff that he's got in cyberspace. So we're always going to have that brother around. He's still with us in spirit. I appreciate that and I give thanks. Uh, I met. Dr. Renoko, uh, I think in 1912, uh, 2012, 1912, my goodness. In, <laughs> in 2012, um, at our, um, I think that was our convention. In, uh, and I'm saying this personally close, close up, and you know, you can shake hands, chat, et cetera. But um, I knew of his lectures and, and other things that he did in Washington, D.C., but never got close until that time. 
I also, uh, three years later, went on a tour with him to the uh, Anomic tour in Mexico. That was the first one he did. Yeah. And so uh, for 10 days, I had some, some close relations, uh, saw all sides of him. <laughs> uh, sides when he was anger, angered, sides when he was happy, sides when he was when he was praiseworthy and praising us too. So um, you know, like, like everyone says, you know, uh, he's he's a brother that uh, we all can give thanks for being here, sharing his knowledge with us. Um, I. Uh, I did some work with uh, the the folks, the black black folks in the Pacific. You know, in a sense, I've had an interest with uh, about Africans in the Pacific. And uh, when I revealed that to him, you know, that's that's when we started to chat a lot more because uh, he also had a lot of interest. Although he, at that time, he hardly ever spoke about them. But um, except for mentioning them in his book, but you know he had a deep interest in the Africans of the Pacific, and so we chatted a lot about that. Um, and so in that those ten days, we chatted about a lot of things. It, on the bus that we were traveling on, it was about forty-eight people. That was a huge tour, and how he managed that, I have no idea. I mean, that's a lot of people to deal with. <laughs> but we went on, the, and sometimes we were on that bus for three to four hours traveling from one place to another. But always, always, he found a way to keep our interests up and to, and to keep us, you know, uh, enjoying wherever we were going. Uh, he would even lecture on those traveling from one point to another. Or if he, if he, was in lecturing on some specific matter with the Almex, he would be engaging us in conversation about ourselves, what we did, what we liked, and uh, helping us to get to know each other. And, uh, and, and so in some ways, uh, we grew to love the brother more and more every single day that we traveled with him. I, I particularly loved his interests. Um, uh, I would say, you know, he was like a kid to me when uh, his interest in the Olmec. And he, you know, if he, he did, that was his first tour. And so whenever he couldn't wait to get to these museums or these places that we had to go. And so, you know, traffic problems or the bus driver gets lost in some way or the other or anything like that. I mean, he would be aggravated, you know. <laughs> He wanted to yeah. get there because he wanted to touch and feel or and, and experience everything. And, and his excitement even excited us because, you know, um, he kept talking about this stuff. You know, the African everywhere in the world to him was a big deal. Yeah. And so he excited us a lot. Um, one time uh, the bus was still moving and, and, and uh, trying to park. And he said, I got to get out of the hair. I got to get into the museum. And the bus driver had to open the door and let him jump out and, and run to the museum while we go park somewhere else in order to come back to the museum. He couldn't wait to get into the museum. That, that's the kind of where he was excited about getting in, uh, to places and seeing things. So, uh, you know, you, you should understand why he, uh, he did what he did in, in learning the specifics or, or everything about the African man throughout the world, the globe, in a global sense. Yeah. It, it, was, it was truly something that uh, in, deep in his heart, he had to know, he had to feel, and he had to impart to, uh, to others because you know, he wrote those books, right? And he yeah. lectured and he took tons of pictures everywhere he went. You know, uh, while we were in Mexico, we, he, he left us at the hotel and he took off and he went to a cathedral somewhere that had a black Madonna. 
wasn't sure exactly where, so he didn't take a bunch of us. He got into a taxi and he got there. And when he got there, he wasn't supposed to be taking pictures of who had or whatever they didn't want. But he got the pictures anyway. Right. That was <laughs> when he goes somewhere, he's bringing back evidence, you know, and he would he, 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 he listen, he'll get that picture one way or the other. And and uh, that, that goes for everything else. What uh, and with come talk speaking about pictures, we went into uh, I think the, the museum uh, in Jalapa. That was a, the um, uh, the anthropological museum there, uh, and there was so much stuff in there. Uh, the heads, the, the heads that he hadn't seen before, and when he got it, I mean, he was in there before, before he got back, and when he waited for us outside the door, and he couldn't get. Listen, he had to get the specific ones. If he didn't get to them yet. We had to move. He said, move, move, move. Come on, we got to get this. A lot to see. And we just have so much time. So we were all excited because he was excited. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, speaking of pictures, he couldn't see everything. And uh, he, but he got pictures of whatever he saw. In a way, he had, he left at a certain time. I disappeared at one point because you know, I, you know, people are, people love to stand up and, you know, pose, take pictures, da, da, da. and I, like him, I wanted to go see. And I got some pictures out of that museum that when I came back to the States, I published a few. And, uh, and you know, <laughs> he didn't have them. So on his second visit, you know, I knew he just went there and he had to find it. They, they were small, they were in a, tiny area but he found them and he got back and he published more of them so it was like yeah I, I he, was, <laughs> he, he excited me in learning I mean I just love you know I have listen anyway we, I'm not going to continue on this long stretch it's too much um he uh, because of of our interest in Africans in the Pacific he was going the following year and he invited me you got to come brother and I said, oh, you know, um, you know, it's uh, next year. I think I have to go to Cuba and I have to go somewhere. And so, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Uh, I did not make that tour. He, he went to uh, he went to Papua New Guinea. I think he went to Solomon Islands and he went and then they went to, I think, uh, Vietnam, et cetera. Um, and now I'm. I'm like disappointed that I wouldn't be able to do that with him because at some point I knew I was going to do that. So, you know, it's, it's you, what you learn, you, you continue to learn. You don't go to 124 countries in the world if you didn't have that, that thirst or that hunger to find everything about the African man on this earth. And uh, I, I give thanks and praises that I, I have had uh, the opportunity and, and the honor to be in his presence while he was doing work and touring. And uh, I will miss him sorely. Uh, and, uh, you know, but like everyone else here, he was a member of the UNIA. Uh, and we talked a, a lot about that while traveling. And I can tell you well, all the folks that said before, that he loved women, he mentioned women, he would mention African women, he mentioned the black women of all the places he went. Uh, yes. You know, we talked a lot about that. And on that bus tour that we went, 75% or more of the people who were on that tour were black women. So we were surrounded by, by, by black women. And I guess maybe it's that interest that he projected to them and, and that love that he, you know, he projected as well. That, those black women were attracted to him in the sense of wanting to go on a tour with him in a place like uh, Mexico. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful and uh, I will miss him, but uh, may he rest in power. Thank hey, you, Bobby. folks. All right, uh, bro 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 yes. brothers and sisters, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to waiver my, my presentation uh, for, for, for the next person because it's very, very important. I mean, I've done a lot. Uh, I did a couple of radio shows and it's going to be a lot more. But uh, I was honored to appoint Renoko as traveling ambassador in 2011. My good brother, 
who, who served with me for eight years as the first assistant. I serve him now as the first assistant. And my brother reappointed Renoko Rashidi as soon as we could to travel an ambassador because Baba Akili Nkrumah is not only our president general of the UNIARC 2020, but he's also a dear brother of our good brother, Renoko. So without any further ado, Baba Akili Nkrumah. Oh man, Asante Sanu, with all of the comments that have been made, I think what strikes me most is that knowing Renoko, you know he found our presence wherever he went. He yep. didn't go to any country, any island, and not find us. He told me the story about the picture that he wasn't supposed to take and how he managed to take it even though people were watching him. Understood that. But I also need us to understand that in the time of transition, as he elevates to the next level, he continues to teach us where we are. He continues to bring us forward, not only with the books, not only with the pictures, but with his personal touch to everyone that spoke. He's personally touched us all. His benefit to us is unmeasurable. He is a historian par excellence. I think David titled it, he did his work in the garden. I think he did more than his work in the garden because I think the garden is going to flourish and continue to grow because of men and women who are on this call, who share that belief that it is truly about us as a people. And we also have to recognize that the lessons, the lessons, we cannot fall sight of that. We have to recognize what we've learned from him and what we didn't learn because we were too busy, but now we will have to learn because we can't be too busy. Hmm. We can't be too busy. You, you got to wrap it around. You see, our ancestors are unique in what they do. Those who came before us are unique in what they do. I would always say it was not time for Renoko to leave. But what I learned from my ancestors is we can't say what time it is. That's something for a force stronger than us. And we have to accept the timing. And then we have to do the work that moves the timing forward and therefore embrace the truth and the love. Loving Renoko Rashidi was imminent. His work on African women, marvelous. His work on African men in different parts of the world in every nation. I think you said 124 countries. And in 124 countries, he identified the African presence in every last one. Many of us, many of us have not done that. Many of us may not get to do that, but he did it so we can take that lesson and build on it and make the garden stronger. Renoko Rashudi, I would say, would be missed, but he's not going to be missed because we're not letting him go. He's going to still be here working. He's going to still be here guiding and giving us truth. You see, transition is not the end. It's just the end of this physical presence. It's not, the, it's not over. Because Renoko Rashidi, is going to walk on the continent of Africa where we develop our own government, our own democratic government for African people. Ronoko will be standing with Marcus Messiah Garvey, Thomas W. Harvey, Charles L. James, and other men and women. He'll be right there. And so, Baba Moses, I didn't know you knew him in 1912. But I'll, I have to take that into some consideration the next time I look at your membership card. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there's a lot more to say. And I know in due course, I will have more time. I don't want to push it, but I just wanted to share the unique love and respect. And the mere fact that we honor him on his Earth Day and we get to honor him again in 40 days. Exactly. Plus, yeah, we're going to honor him at convention. You're right, PG. Yeah. 
Uh, and I, I really appreciate everybody taking the time out. And I really want to let Margo, if you wanted to share anything, Sister Margo, uh, I didn't overlook you. Uh, Sister Margo, are you still with us? Sister Margo was in the division. Yes. Right? Is there anything you want to say as, as a member of, of, of 369? Um, pretty much everything has been said about Dr. Renoco. Uh, I only had the honor of meeting him one time. Um, I've seen him more virtually uh, in his virtual presentations that were great. Um, he was a phenomenal historian, educator, lecturer, and we must continue to his work in educating our people and all people of the African presence that we have all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Margaret, Sister uh, uh, Carla, uh, is, is it any remarks, uh, 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 Yuri, uh, Paula, any remarks y'all wanna share? And uh, we, we, the reason I'm calling on you all only because y'all did not did not present, but you have an opportunity if you want to share anything to come or open up your camera, though, if you do, because we are, we are also streaming on Facebook. And if not, I understood. So, Mama Paula. Hey, everyone. I don't, I can't quite get myself in focus here. Well, you're looking good. You're looking good, Mama Paula. Okay, that's fine then. <laughs> uh, just uh, very quickly, uh, uh, Renoko was someone who was blessed and highly favored by the ancestors while he walked here on earth. Because I always recognize that he actually knew his purpose and he was able to actualize uh, that purpose. I always feel that people, I remember Maladona Somme would say that the purpose of the naming ceremony for the newborn baby is to determine that baby's purpose in life and to provide a name that is consistent with that purpose. And I, after I read Somme's book, I said, I wonder what it must feel like to actually know your purpose and act on that. And uh, Renoko was one who was guided truly by the ancestors, knew his purpose, went all over the world looking for Black people, not Black people who had immigrated to these places, but Black people who were indigenous to all of the places that he visited. And uh, the fact that he was able to uh, visit so many countries, uh, was I think uh, phenomenal because he was driven. He was truly, truly driven to do that work. And I think that was very special. And the last thing I'll say is that he was an excellent artist. I don't know if anybody has mentioned this, but his photographs were phenomenal. Uh, when we would, when I would watch his lectures, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the quality of the photos because I was so, uh, I was so wrapped up in, in listening to what he was saying about the photo, but I've been looking at, at, at many of his photos online and his photographs are stunning and beautiful. So he, all, he also had an artistry about him that uh, probably wasn't recognized as much because of his brilliance as a historian. So uh, I commit myself and Adasi to do whatever we can to continue his legacy. And thanks very much for allowing me to speak. Of course, uh, Dr. Dr. Winnie Scott, you wanna share anything? Hi, everybody, peace and blessings to our ancestors and thank you for having me here. I was honored to go on a trip with Dr. Renoko Rashidi to Guatemala, Mexico City, and Belize. I was coming from Dubai on my way to see Dr. Sebi at Usha Village. And then I heard that Renoko was having this tour and the Omeg Heads, I had heard about that. So I wanted to see the Omeg Heads. And so I went on the, this this trip and I had a chance to actually get to know Dr. Renoko Rashidi 
and I met Sangor and Zama and a few other people. It was a good thing. I have Omec hair, a picture of me in the Omec heads. Mm -hmm. On the back of the Omec heads, they have braids mm -hmm. on one of the statues, which was awesome. They had a, we went to the, see the pyramids in Teal Cockin and to see what our presence there. And we were gonna go see, go to a school that that we didn't get a chance to go to because the, there was a, a, a protest going on. And so we had to turn around and take right, a detour. Right, right, right. So that was nice. And he was, and, and I was thankful that I was able to see the African presence in Guatemala, in Belize. It was awesome. I also want to say a little bit shout out to Tony Browder because I'll give your books and now valid a civilized now valid contributions to civilization. I would give those as gifts to my family members. So that's a nice thing. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I know I know a couple of other people that are with us, James Wilson and Carla. Carla, you want to say anything? Carla. Good evening, Bob. Um Bob, but thank you so much, Robert Sengor, for the honor of adding another Adasi voice to the memory of Baba Renoko Rashidi and his many lectures and, and to, you know, sharing just his presence during many occasions between the UNIA and Adasi programming. And he is still with us, just not in body. He is with us in spirit. He is with us in his legacy. And as Mama Paula said, and Mama Yuri said, and Mama Tendai said, we will do what we can to continue on his work. Thank you so much. So well, thank you, Carla. And you know, uh, by the way, you all, September the 11th will be 40 day rights. And I know that Adasi, the African Diaspora Ancestral Commemoration Institute is going to be hosting a 40 day rights and that's gonna be powerful. There probably will be some others, but that one will be online. You will get information. Uh, Brother James Wilson was with us. I think, he, are you still with us, James? I don't see your picture. I know you were with us. I don't know what happened to the picture. Oh, but go ahead, speak. You can speak, don't worry, go ahead. All right. Um, I I think I've known Renoko since wow, very early in the the two thousands, and I used to see him speak in the 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 basement of Roots Activity Learning Center to several di different places, and I was always tapped to collect the monies uh, for the for the various programs because people knew that they would receive what was given us. And, but I just, I just must, must say that Renoko was funny. I mean, he loved, and, and he would say, I love black people. And I say, and, 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 I, and I would say, yeah, Renoko, before, before when, when we were still uh, building ourselves up and hardening one another, um we we would say stuff like that we don't say anymore like i love niggas because niggas is me but um but that's not where we are should have been but we had to harden ourselves to what we were living in and hearing as 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 children people speaking to us in that in that vernacular um but Renoko was fun loving. He, he had a passion that would drive anyone uh, uh, because he was, he was always working for his, for his people. And it, there, there's, 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 there's nothing better. I remember driving Renoko and uh, Zama and Senghor up to Philadelphia for a program that Renoko was having. And I mean, we just we just had wonderful times, and it was it's all about giving, giving a giving of self, and 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 letting our people know of the the abundance that that we have and have always had, 
and uh, showing our greatness, uh, um, paying homage to our queens. Just, it, it, he, he, he was just, he's, he is, he's a great, great, great African. And, and, and he loved, <laughs> he loved the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, you know, down to his toes and, and to the top of his bald head. He's just he's just a lovely a lovely person, and uh, all all praises and honor are 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 due him at, at, at this time of of his transition and uh, his ascendancy coming up on September 11th, and I, I just Renoko's not gone, you know Renoko's just like just like Marcus in the whirlwind. And we will all meet again. Yes, sir, James. Uh, uh, Sister Bente, Bente, you wanna share anything, Bente? Bente? Bente, you wanna share anything? Okay. Uh, if nobody else has anything else to say, we're going to officially close up. But I want to say to everybody. Uh, Robert, did you see my message? No, but we live on Facebook. What, what, what's, what, no, I haven't seen. OK, I, I wanted to share a photo, uh, do a screen share here. I'm not even sure. Well, right what. now we're at the 10 o'clock hour, and that's going to be a little tough because you're not you're not oh. up to share. Oh, huh? You have just, to be set up to just share. Just one photo of quick sharing. I say you have to be set up to share. You know. Oh, I see. Okay. And that's going right. to take a little time going through the tech. Okay. All right. Eight o'clock. No problem. But there'll be other times, Bob Mosi. I, I, you know, I wish you had hit me up earlier on that. It's, okay. It's ten o'clock hour. I want to respect everybody's Monday. I know the folks on the LA and the LA don't mind, <laughs> but right now over here it's ten, and you know I want to respect the time. We did plan to end at nine forty-five. Uh, I want to thank, I want to ask the tech person though, Haru, if he has anything to share real quick before we close out. Brother Haru? Um, just when you think about the external, like Renoko Rashidi and the other answers that has gone before them, uh, when you write about a history and you take the photographs of our people and the places, when people view those pictures or they read the words, holographic images are open up portals to our ancestral timelines is, or is created. So when two or more people read the work of our ancestors, um, what has gone before us is open up the possibilities for the future. So Rashiki, Renoko Rashiki was definitely an ancestor who specialized in the harmonic algorithms of our ancestors and what we've done in the past and what we can do in the future. That's an excellent point, Aru, and a good closing point. I just wanna amplify something because I wanna thank Adasi you know, uh, uh, I know it's not September yet, but September the 11th, and I know people want to hold on. We want to hold on to his legacy and protect his legacy, but we want our brother to soar through the cosmos so that he can work his mojo on that level. Because if he if he could do what he did on this level, imagine what he's going to do as an, a goon goon. See, and, and, and the bottom line, like James Small said, Renoko did so much work in following his cosmic mission. Once we ascend him, he may become an Orisha. I want y'all to think about that one. You see, because, and it's not, it's not about the individual personality. I want to reiterate that. It's about the work. It's not about the individual personality. It's about what comes through them because yeah, each one of us, as the president general said, have a mission and we all should be attending to our gardens. That don't mean everybody got to grow food, but whatever everybody do, like Renoko said, everybody can do something. Everybody should do something. And when we all get on that same black tricity frequency, we will revert back to our great comedic legacy. Believe me, brothers and sisters, we've been free on this planet longer than we've been in bondage. So don't, don't be content with the food of chickens. You know, and to my young brothers and sisters, their generations yet have been born that are gonna know the legacy of Renoko, but not just Renoko. Honorable Charles L. James. Marcus Garvey, Amy Jocks Garvey, Nanny Helen Burroughs, because we are our ancestors, whether we like it or not. And it's very important to recognize that each one of us have a mission 
And it went, and, 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 and they talk about mission impossible. No, mission <laughs> is possible. Mission is possible. And all we got to do is tune in and we can win. Without any further ado, I want to thank everybody. Thank the tech folks. Thank all of you all who have been so uh, eloquent in sharing your reflections. I know um, with Coco before, before you end out, may I say something? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I want to also make sure that we thank you for the energy that you put into it. You see, we are a collective energy. And although you say, hey, I want to thank all of you, we have to recognize that there was energy from you as well that made this happen. See, so in this garden, and if you look at us, this is the damn garden. Excuse my English. This is the garden. Each one of us are gardeners. So I want to thank you for your gardening, sir. It's important that all we right. all be recognized. So everybody, yeah, everybody, we're gonna do we're gonna do the seven Arambes because Arambe is the division that Renoko is an active member in all the way through December and through, through eternity now. And uh, he don't have to pay no more dues. Well, yeah, he paid his dues. <laughs> he paid his dues. That's paid right. His dues. He so, pay no more. On the count of three, we're going to do the seven of Rambay, y'all. Everybody un mic. Uh, everybody un mic. Come on, Mike. Everybody un mic. Open up the mic. And thank you, Tony, for sticking with us all this time. I know you're hard. I know a lot of what you do. He did, but we missed it. That's when we were out of time. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? One. Yeah. Two, three. Harambe. Harambe. Before you go, Brother Holly, yeah. you, were, you were speaking about independent institutions in D.C. when you finally went to one where they was teaching, leading on in the first grade that was three four years in front of where you had learned yeah i mentioned that because as a teacher at the market garvey shuley of positive education we stressed the same thing right. came to dc got some lessons went yeah. up to new york got some lessons mm -hmm. and then we built that institution in philadelphia which lasted over 25 years amazing that's what's See, so that means we can do it again. Absolutely. 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 Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tendai. What you say? I said you did the same thing as the Nerari Education Institute. My students in the third grade, the, the seniors in the high school were not able to tutor them because my third grade students were better in math and reading. Mm. The seniors in high school. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, so, so, so. You were at the Njeri Institute, right, Sister Tendai? Nureri. Nureri. Yeah. Yeah, I know. After Walimu. Yes. Okay. It's been, a bless it's been a blessing, everybody. I know we're not saying goodbye. We're saying God morning to everybody. <laughs> All right. All right, send everybody. Him. So, brother, send in love. Send in love. Brother, Eru, you Much love and light. Facebook. I don't, know, I don't know. It looks like everybody wants to stay up till midnight on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Rue, you can take us off of Facebook. Yes. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. All right. Peace,